We're back. All right, we are back. We're live. It's on. It's recording. We have audio. It's always a good thing. We oh, did. Yeah. We did an opener one time, uh, and it was going to be like a, a product opening video, and we got uh, about 15 minutes into it to realize we didn't have audio. That was a that was a heartbreaker. Was <laughs> it was a bad deal. Um, welcome back. Like, uh, my uh, little mishap uh, on the last trip with BZ Guide Service, you know. Oh, with the slow motion and. Well, not only the slow motion, but I uh, thought I was recording and come to find out I wasn't oh. recording. <laughs> you know, on, on the big fish. On the big fish. <laughs> but thank God we was able to uh, at least get get something off of it. Right, right. Uh, so, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in to this video podcast. Uh, for those of you that's listening straight from our podcast, we do do these in video podcast mode, and this is the first. The actual first podcast that we've done in a long time. A very long time. We had a lot of people that wanted us to keep doing them, and we stopped doing them. And I really don't know why. It was kind of a dumb reason as to why, I guess. But We're changing that now. We're changing that now. We're going to get back into it because we're wanting to, I don't know, I guess just give you all the content that y'all have been asking for. Um, so, here we go. And what's not better than sitting around with buddies and talking about hunting, fishing, all of doors, camping, home. mountain hiking, whatever. That's right. Shed hunting. Just loving it. Just loving the outdoors. So, how about this? Um, before we go any further, let me go ahead and give a little bit of a spill over our sponsor, Chum Bums. Awesome group of people. Let me tell you what, guys. If you've never heard of Chum Bums, they are a growing community um, that you need to check out. They are a standalone um, social media platform that... Uh, it's truly revolved around the outdoorsman. Um, there's no, you're not worried about third party advertisements and stuff like that. You know, if you're seeing an advertisement in Chum Bums, it's going to be from like the Chum Bums marketplace, their actual store. And the stuff that you find on Chum Bums, the actual Chum Bum stuff, unless you're getting it from a buddy or something, you're not getting it anywhere else. You can't go get it on Google. You can't go get it on eBay. You can't go get it from Walmart. Um, you can only get these things from Chum Bums. Directly. Directly from Chum Bums. And a lot of these items, fishing poles, uh, whether you want clothing, it does, whatever, you name it, you can find it on Chum Bums. Uh, it's outdoor related, camping, hiking, uh, fishing, hunting. It, they are growing on that side. They're, they're oh, absolutely. in the process of getting more merchandise and oh, absolutely. stuff that we would like to see out there. Oh yeah, and, and you know, on top of that, the social media side of, of uh, Chum Bums is really what captured my attention because you know I look at like and I'm, I'm not gonna say any labeling I'm not gonna label any um, other social media platforms but one that you know everybody and their dog uses and those uh, and uh, yeah <laughs> um, you know it, there's there's so much drama that comes with it and I love it the drama and moms. all the ads and oh yeah we don't have to deal with that I hate it for that but then when we go to but when I go to Chum Bums we don't deal with that yeah exactly we don't have to mess with that check out Chum Bums just real quick Chum Bums is an outdoor adventure community where you can shop discounted products in the members only outdoor outlet store book an adventure with one of the many outdoor adventure partners all from your Chum Bums app and that's just the tip of the iceberg and that's it goes Chum so much Bums. deeper than that. C H U M B U M Z. Chum Bums. Check them out, guys. They, okay, so obviously working with them, we've gotten to know them a bit of a more of a personal level. Truly, some amazing people that love the outdoors. And not just them, but love seeing others getting involved. Oh, yeah. Very, very outdoors. good support system. Absolutely. 110%. So, big shout out to Chum Bums. If you haven't checked them out, make sure to go check them out. It is a membership-only platform. But the membership is... It's, it's not expensive at all. It's not expensive at all for the perks that come with it. And let me tell you what. Just do yourself the favor and go check it out. <laughs> check it out. You won't be disappointed. What do you got to lose? You got nothing to lose. You got nothing to lose. You, get, you ain't got nothing to lose. It, it is, you know what? I have met so far uh, over Chum Bums, I've met a few people <laughs> that um, I got to tell you what, I've met some genuinely good people over Chum Bums, and there has been some invitations 
invitations from that person to the outdoor genetics team um, and to, you know, not just myself, but like I said, to the team to go, you know, make a trip, go fishing, go hunting, all sorts of stuff. It's a great community of great outdoorsmen who truly love being out there and being out there with people. Check them out, guys. Chum bums. All right. So let's start this out. Let's set the scene as if you can't tell already. Okay. Let's set the scene. You wake up. It's oh, are you already getting goosebumps? I'm getting goosebumps. You already we haven't even started the scene yet. I'm getting goosebumps. You wake up, it's opening morning. You get in the truck, you're all camoed out from head to toe. You get in your truck, you back out of your driveway and you start going down the road. And you gotta turn your fog lights on because it's so stinking foggy. And you're driving, you got you get to where you're gonna go. And you step out and you go, and you take a fresh breath of that amazing, beautiful springtime air. And who doesn't love that smell? Who does not love that smell? You are out of your mind. Getting fired up. If you don't love that smell. You get out there, you walk down the tree line a little ways, and it's still, it's still a little foggy. Sun's starting to think about coming up. And you let out a hoot owl call. And you hear, <laughs> man, turkey season here in Oklahoma is now upon us. Just recently, though, um, I know we'll be posting today's date. It was is what, the 23rd? 23rd. So we are a few days behind from opening day, opening day was actually the 16th, but we're into the second weekend, we're into the second weekend of turkey season, and I have not shot a bird yet, and I've only been able to go one time. I've not either. I've, <sighs> I've gone three times, and uh, still, still haven't made it happen yet. But that's turkey hunting. That's turkey hunting. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna be talking about turkey hunting. If you can't tell, um, you know, we're, we're we're gonna hit a little bit on the regulation changes that happened for Oklahoma this year. And why they implemented these um, changes and maybe some of our opinions. Uh, notice I said opinions uh, over these changes and uh, what's going on and, you know, what we think should, could, and won't happen and all these other good things that we could talk about in this segment. So, so starting out, the bag limit. What do you think about the bag limit now compared to what it was last year? Well, you know... <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of disappointed in one sense, you know, you, you get to go turkey hunting, what, one month in the spring? Mm-hmm. I mean, the, <laughs> and you got the fall season. The fall but, pushes longer, but. Yeah, but the fall season, it's it's not as fun as the spring season. It's kind of like, you know, my, my dad always says, when he has something that he really likes, let's take, a, let's take a good chocolate chip cookie, for instance. He eats that chocolate chip cookie, and you say, well, how was that cookie? He goes, well, it was musty, and it kind of throws you off. Musty, so it it, it, it tastes bad. No, it's musty. Must have another. <laughs> so you know, turkey hunting kind of the same deal. You get that first bird on the ground, and they're they're kind of musty. You want to go get another. You want another one. See, Oklahoma, generally speaking, unless you were in uh, some special regions of the state, uh, last year. And, you know, years prior was a three-bird state. Now, a lot of the counties were only two-bird counties, but you could travel to another county to get another bird. So you could get a total of three birds. Right. This year, they dropped us from three birds to one bird. To one bird. Now, it is because we are in a decline in the turkey population, according to the ODWC. And, um, you know, it just kind of is what it is. You know, I mean, there's nothing that you or I can do about it no. other than suck it up and get really picky about which bird we're going to shoot. Very picky. So, um, but I do understand why, you know, in a turkey decline, um, they drop us down to one bird. Okay, I kind of get it. And I, I, you know, they want less toms shot so that the toms can breed the hens. I, I totally get that. And that also, with that, 
you know, if, you know, typically speaking, if a guy goes out, you know, and he shoots the first bird he sees, or maybe the first mature bird he sees, then that means he's going to be in the woods less. So that's going to be disturbing the turkeys less, keeping them more in a natural routine without being interrupted. So, I mean, I get it. Well, not only that, it gives uh, us more of an opportunity, I guess you could say, put us on the map for a trophy turkey state as far as some big birds. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I mean, it can it goes both ways. It's a it's it's sad for people like John more so because <laughs> this guy, if you know anything about John, he is all about the turkey hunting. <laughs> Can't help it. <laughs> you know, he would he would throw the deer hunting out in to, a heartbeat to get extra birds in a heartbeat. I wish, like, okay, I'm gonna catch some scrutiny for this, but I wish the deer population and the turkey population. I wish it was flip flopped. I wish they would shorten deer season and make it to where we can only shoot one deer a year. And I wish the population of turkey was skyrocketing and we could shoot 20 turkey a year and they would extend season from like the end of February to like the end of June. That's what I would, that's what I want to happen. You know, though. But we don't have the population for that. With that being said, it's probably a good thing it's not that way because I don't think you would have an empty space on your wall. No, there would be, there would, you would not be able to see any. You wouldn't see no paint. You wouldn't see no paint on my wall. You wouldn't even tell that it was wall because you would think that the wall was actually made of fans. I mean, you can, you can, I mean, you can still, I mean, in my studio, you can see the walls, but. Well, we have to have that. We got to have that for the green screen and stuff, but you know, like in my living room, Space is far few and in between now, anyways. It's, it's full. And I still got things at the taxidermist coming in. I don't know well, where I'm going to put them. Let's see, not to be off topic, but you've got two trophy gold class rams. Mm-hmm. You've got uh, Michelle's fallow deer. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's three see. ducks. Three ducks. <laughs> not that it's coming here, but you got uh, your nephew's very first His harvest, very first harvest. Which also was a very nice ram mm-hmm. at that. Mm hmm. So, I mean, we've already got at least seven things at the taxidermist. Yeah, that, uh, that's not including. I might, I haven't decided yet, but I might be sending in for a replica mount of that crappie that I caught. The big crappie. I caught a, a stud crappie a few weeks ago, and I haven't decided yet, but I'm thinking about pulling the trigger and sending in the dimensions and everything to have a replica made. So you done got the measurements. Yeah, I'm ready, dude. Right. I, like, I'm, I'm pretty... Well, yeah, we, we know what, what what's happening there. That that's not uh thinking about. It. It's it's going to happen. It's you just it, haven't done it. It's yet. it's probably yeah 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 yeah. It's probably going to happen. But turkey season, turkey season. So that's how I feel about turkey season. Everything else could go away, and if the only thing I was allowed to do is turkey hunt, like if if you told me I, if I have to choose between turkey hunting, deer hunting, bear hunting, uh, squirrel hunting, pig hunting, duck hunting, whatever else, I don't, I don't care. If you gave me a list of things, John, I want you to pick one animal that you can hunt the rest of your life, and what you're going to pick is based off of your pure passion, your pure love, what you love to do. For me, it would be... The turkey. The turkey. The beautiful turkey. The Merriams, the Rios, the Easterns, the, the Osceolas, the Oscillated, uh, all of them. I don't care. And all the subspecies, all the subspecies of turkeys are beautiful to me. And that gobble is is a beautiful sound to my ears. And the hens going crazy is nothing more than a beautiful chorus to my ears. Oh, I love turkey season so much. <laughs> so, but the bag limit did drop here in Oklahoma from three birds to one bird now. Man. It's going to be a huge adjustment for you this year. Yes, it is. Which it, means John is going to be super, super picky. And John also has the bird that he wants to shoot on camera. Um, unfortunately, it was a week and a half before season started. So I legally could not shoot him. But I got him on camera. And, I mean, he, he won't score as big as my triple, triple beard. beard but he will definitely be heavier i guarantee you like okay i know the people listening are about to say i'm nuts and i'm crazy because here in this side of the state we don't typically get real big birds like heavy birds like a heavy bird down here you know 19 20 21 pounds that's that's a heavy bird 
I guarantee you this bird will push 24, 25 pounds. He a behemoth of a bird. He his head looks like a dying a, a dying. It looks like a dang softball on top of his neck. He that's the bird I'm going after. I don't unless I see a bird bigger than him, I don't want to shoot any other bird unless it's just getting down to the end of season and nothing's happening. I do not want to shoot any other bird but him unless it's a you know of adequate size or bigger. And I'm telling you, a, a 24, 25 pound bird down here, that's that's a behemoth. That that's a big Southern Oklahoma Rio. That's a big Rio, straight up. Anyways, so yes, I'm gonna have to be really picky. Uh, but they also did something else in the rules and regulations for the turkey population. And me, <coughs> excuse me, knowing that I am not the turkey connoisseur as you might be. And um, you know how they, they, you hear the phrase a lot, the horse whisperer. Well, John's the turkey whisperer. Well, I wouldn't say that. But. And uh, I haven't quite figured out that lingo yet. So I know earlier season when turkey season was originally, until this year, it was a lot easier for me to call in a bird. And I'm, I can't call a bird. And very good at all. And what he's referring to is early season. What we would have considered early season last year was two weeks ago. Well, going on three weeks ago now. Mm-hmm. Um, they actually pushed season out two weeks later here in Oklahoma. And for me, I, I, for one, I like hunting in the mornings. And I love early season. Because I, I think more. I think the biggest reason why I love early season is because I've waited all year for it to get here and it's finally here i think that's why i love early season yeah and i'm just i'm let's go you know like 3 a.m we gotta get out there we're gonna be late john it's only a 20 minute drive we're going to be late you know like i'm ready to be out yeah but that's the starting of hunting season letting you know that it has arrived it, again. it is here and that's when you know things start picking up kick-starting you got your turkey hunting. You got your mushroom hunting. You got your sand bass running. You're your looking for sheds. Spawning, you're looking for sheds. You know all these great things. Spoonbill. Are happening. Spoonbill too. Spoonbill. That's right. That's right. We got on a mess of spoonbill a while back. You know, springtime is just the perfect time of year. Straight up, in my opinion. In my opinion, it's just well, the perfect time of year. Springtime tells you good things are fixing to arrive. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. You know, and like I said, they pushed two. Two, they pushed us out two weeks back, so you know, like don't get me wrong, I, I've killed, I've killed a lot of birds. What would have been the equivalent to where we're starting at now? Mm-hmm. I've killed a lot of birds during that time, uh, and with that, I mean, I, there's been several times. Um, you know, it's been the very last day. Mm-hmm. You know, th- that's just hunting. That's just how it goes. Uh, you know, so they pushed the season out though. To give the hens a chance, a longer chance to breed. Which is not a bad thing. No, it's not a bad thing because we do need to see a rise. Now, personally, in our area, I personally, from what I have seen, now granted, I don't spend as much time out there as I used to. <laughs> but um, in years prior, from what I have seen to, to now... Um, I don't feel like in our area, specifically this small town, that the turkey numbers are in a decline. But that's not to say the same for the rest of the state. Now, and I could be totally wrong, but I'm no biologist. I ain't, I ain't a part of none of that. But from what I have seen, the time that I have spent, the, <laughs> the months at a time that I have spent in the woods uh, scouting, looking, understanding, following, tracking, trailing... And listening to turkeys, from what I've seen in our area, we are not in a decline. Like I said, that's not to say everywhere else. Right. You know. So I, I get why they pushed it out two weeks, and I get why they dropped our bag limit. But, of course, it would be the one thing that I love <laughs> that they do it to, you know. But it happens. So, but, yeah, it is turkey season now. Thank God. And boy, don't it feel good, at, good to be out there oh in those woods? Oh my goodness! I got out the other morning. I worked a, I worked um, two twelve-hour shifts back to back to back. Night shift graveyard from six p.m. to six a.m. Left work at six a.m. 
and was out in the woods where I go hunting. And uh, that, that next morning without even going to sleep, uh, I went straight from work to the woods and had birds all around me, not the right bird, unfortunately, and then ended up making a turkey hunt turn into a pig hunt, pig hunt. and ended up killing two pigs. So, I mean, that's a good thing. That's... That's a good way to start the season. It's a good way to start the season. You know, it's just a drop in the bucket when it comes to the hog population around here. But, you know, that at least that's two pigs down. And hopefully that scared that group of pigs off for at least a small time. So that maybe the turkeys will, you know, be able to uh, brood in that area. Because it is a good brooding area out there. Um, that's what I was not too far you, from where I was at. Is how, you, how do you feel? Um, I mean, granted, where I hunt, I really don't have, per se, pigs every mm-hmm. now and then we have some that come through but how do you feel based off of what you've seen the other day i mean you're sending us you know video clips and i mean 30 40 something pigs maybe more and not just in one location but multiple locations yeah, that's in so where i was hunting at in that specific area the the field that i was covering i'm not even gonna lie and say how big i think it was that how big i think it is it's massive it's huge and it's a huge tree line and then parcels of trees just all the way down that parcel of land. It's huge. Um, I got there when I first pulled in, I saw pigs in the middle of the field. I saw a group of about 15 to 20. And then, um, I got out of my truck, started walking. Now, granted the, it it runs parallel with a Creek Mm -hmm. and walking down. I looked over and I think that was when I sent y'all that first video. I do believe, Mm -hmm. um, there was a group of, I think, I think there was only like nine that was in the open that I could actually count. Um, and then I got to the next group that I have on camera. I believe there was like 20 some odd pigs in that group went about another 70 yards, 80 yards. And there was another group of pigs there and then turned around and looked and out in the middle of the field was a group of probably 40, 50 pigs. Um, and that's including all the piglets, you know, running Mm -hmm. around and stuff. And then hunted there for a while, had the birds gobbling, couldn't get them to come in, come in. So went back around to the other side, right in front of my pickup, 20, 30 yards in front of my pickup. Pigs standing there again. A group of, let's see, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine to 12 pigs standing there right in front of my pickup. So I went from a turkey hunt to a pig hunt and, you know, uh, the, the pigs can make it difficult, you know, I mean, they're not good. You that know? was what I was going to say, you know, next question on, on your experience on the turkey hunting and you have pigs in the area like that, mm-hmm. do you feel that that impacts you getting a bird in if they lay in between you and the bird? Okay. So this is speaking from experience. This is not speaking from an opinion and I have video proof of this. Um, both myself and Chase Shrick from Rough and Ready Outdoors have video proof of this. And well, if you don't follow okay. those guys, uh, check them out. Yeah, Rough and Ready Outdoors. Uh, now, I guess I say we have video proof. We have video proof of what the turkey did. We don't have video proof of the pigs right here beside us. Mm-hmm. But that's one of those things you're going to have to take our word for it. But you can see what happens and you can hear us talk about it. What happened? And this is what happened. Um, when it comes with pigs and turkeys, do I believe pigs disrupt turkeys, or do I believe they scare turkeys? Um, I can believe they. I believe they can push them off. Um, definitely a hundred percent. I believe anything can push a turkey out. Uh, just like you or me going out into the woods, or even like um, some people say, "Oh, it's good to have cattle around." Some people say it's bad to have cattle around. Well, you know, speaking from experience, and I. This is just me personally. I have never shot a turkey with pigs around it. I've never shot a turkey with cattle around it. I've never shot a turkey with horses around it. And when I say around it, I don't mean here's a turkey and on the other side of the field there's a bunch of cows. Mm -hmm. I mean within the general area. Within that general area, I have never shot one. And I have had them come up, coming, getting almost within range. Having cattle come up and check out my decoy. Where does that turkey go? Straight out. Having pigs, like what happened with me and Chase Strick from Rough and Ready Outdoors one morning while we were hunting. Uh, That Tom was working in textbook. Goblin is, we weren't even calling at this point. We were just sitting there and he was just, 
probably been just gobbling like crazy. And he laid down. He literally laid down and tucked below the grass. And I literally went like this. What's he doing? I literally said, what's he doing? And like, he's laying down. Why? And then not even just a few yards from us, a group of pigs run right beside us. He saw those pigs coming up the hill and laid down. Wow. As the pigs ran by. I've had deer ruin my turkey hunting. I've had deer spook off my turkey. I know that sounds crazy because, you know, these animals, they interact with each other. Right. Cattle interact with turkey. Turkey interact with deer. Pigs interact with turkey. Pigs interact with deer. Deer interacts with cattle. I mean, all these animals, they coincide in the same environment. So they all interact with each other, but I have still had these animals spook my turkey hunting. Now, with that, I have only had a few deer ruin my hunting. And that was because uh, I got busted, and I'm assuming by smell, because I was covered in bug spray and DEET and, and everything else. And so, you know, when the doe walks in and she gets down range, or I say the doe, you know, antlerless deer, um, you know, they're standing out there and they go, you know, uh, that, that's just a, a warning bell for everything in the neighborhood. So, you know, that, that, that kind of stuff happens. But when it comes to hog hunting, or excuse me, turkey hunting around hogs, um, When it comes to the hunting process around them, I try to avoid them. But if they're within range, especially because you know most of the time I'm hunting with my shotgun or my bow, obviously, um, it's one or the other. If they're within range, I'm probably going to shoot the pig. Um, for the hunting aspect, it's because of that reason, right? That, you know, like I was explaining with me and Chase, that turkey pitched down and hide. Luckily, when the pigs passed, he continued to come in. But I have had them scare them completely off and then not harvest a bird that day. So I personally, through personal experiences, do believe that other animals, but pigs, um, mess with your turkey hunting. I really do. Hmm. That's interesting. I mean, I know that um, here in Oklahoma, we have a heavily populated area of pigs. Ugh. And... They're a huge, huge nuisance. So, huge nuisance. They, know, they want them dead on site, but now they got so many regulations on pigs that nobody wants to do anything about it because you gotta you gotta jump through hoops to to trap them and do whatever you want to do with them for a nuisance animal. The ODWC needs to pull their head out of their butt on that. They straight up, if they're wanting to claim the pig population is so bad, sorry, I'm kind of getting off on a rant here, but if they want to claim that the pig population is so bad, they need to relax on some of the regulations for. The hog hunting. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, and that's probably um, part of the reason, too, why um, they've probably lowered the bag limit. Because, I mean, we know how hogs are, mm -hmm. more or less. I guess you call them an invasive species. Very much so. They come through there. You know, they find a turkey on a nest. What are they going to do? They're going to eat the eggs. Yep. They are nest destroyers. So, um but and see that now that's another thing, you know. They're talking about wanting to drop the the bag limit and they're wanting to talk about pushing the season out but and i believe that that could be a part of the problem but i believe they are only addressing a small portion of the problem um not just pigs destroy nests mm -hmm. you have other critters that destroy nests to eat the eggs too now here's the thing that is mother nature that is the way mother nature works circle of life circle of life but if we are trying to save a species then we need to be targeting Every aspect. So that includes habitat loss, which, in my opinion, is the big killer. And I'm going to have so many people disagree with me, and I really don't care <laughs> because, I mean, I can prove it just by simply walking out in front of my house and pointing out at all the property loss where there used to be turkeys and now there's not because of property loss. Property loss, in my opinion, is the biggest killer of the turkey population. We're pushing them into more um, consolidated areas, making them easier targets for predation and things like that. Vulnerable. Hunters, more vulnerable. We're pushing them into area, areas that are not their typical habitat. So like around here, what do you see most around here? You see shrub oaks and... Um, open fields. Open fields. That's about it. We do have a couple of tall trees, but 
we really don't have the turkey habitat really good for this area. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just really don't. And I, I do believe that's a big loss. So, you know, we're, we're tackling, you know, hey, let's lower the bag limit. Let's... Um, Let's extend season so they have longer time to breed. Not extend season. Let's push season out two further weeks so that they have more time to breed before they start getting shot. Um, and then that's it. We need to be doing more on habitat uh, loss, and we need to be focusing more on predators. You see, like I said, there's those other critters that eat the eggs that m- the most commonly the ones that people are going to be thinking about coyotes. is going to be, you know, coyotes, um, possums, possums raccoons. and raccoons. You know, those are going to be your typical ones that people think about the most. People don't realize, though, that there are other birds that also do the same thing. And I'm going to take roadrunners. Roadrunners are, wow. Um, roadrunners dang near put pigs to shame. Um, when they find a nest, they will eat every, now they don't eat the shell. They crack the shell and eat the inside. Mm-hmm. Just like a lot, just like many other birds that do it. But, but they're bad about hitting one, eating a little bit, then hitting the next and eating it. And, and so, then moving on to the next nest and then moving on, not just to the turkey population, but also to the quail population. They, they're damaging the quail population. And then you talk about the predators like coyotes mm-hmm. and bobcats. Um, and then around here we have a plethora of, uh, domesticated wild dogs I guess however you want to say it um, that people just let run loose that I have personally witnessed killing turkeys Um, you know and then okay then you start considering the hunting side you know there's so much that goes into turkeys and we're only addressing a part of the problem if the ODWC really wants to see a rise in the turkey population here's the thing we have quite a few turkey hunters in the state out of those turkey hunters um man i need to go back and look up that statistic i'm about to speak out of my butt here and i'm probably about to be wrong i'm not even going to say a number because i know i I'm, i don't know it for a fact so i'm not going to say it but i will say it was a substantially low number that was actively trying to kill the predators between trapping and hunting very minute number they want to reap the benefits of the turkey, but they don't want to put in the work to help bring the turkey population up. But like I said, it's all, it's its not all just one problem. It's not just the season. It's not just the bag limit. It's not just the predators. It's not just the nest raiders. It's not just the habitat loss. It's a combination of all these things. Now, the truth is, is us as the human race, we're going to grow, we're going to expand, and we're going to continue to destroy all of the habitat until there's nothing left to destroy except for each other, which we're already in the process of that. But nevertheless, um, it, you know, I mean, I don't believe it'll be in mine in your lifetime, but there will come a time when there is no habitat left for these animals and hunting will be a thing of the past. Not unless people um, try to help. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, not only that, with the, having the land for the animals to be, mm-hmm. um, planting trees, mm-hmm planting the right habitat that the animals need Mm -hmm. you know you can only take so much before there's nothing left so you got to help give back right well and things too when we start doing that and we start seeing the um how productive that's being when we do start planting those fields when we do start maybe you have a group of maybe you have a, a 60 acre portion there in your property that's got you know it's covered up in shrub oaks but you've got several trees amongst those shrub oaks that would be good for um, you know, creating a roosting area, mm-hmm. right? A place for them to sleep. Um, you know, if you was to go and cut down several acres of, you know, say 10, 15 acres of those shrub oaks from around those big tall trees, like the cottonwoods that we have around here, um, those turkeys would use that area. They can't use it when it's covered up so thick that they can't fly up. They right. can't use it. So, you know, and I'm not saying they won't use it. I'm just saying it's really hard for them to access. And much like people, turkeys, deer, whatever it is, they're the same way. We want to take the path of least resistance. Mm-hmm. So why fly up through five million branches and hitting my head along the way to get in that tree when I can travel four miles down the road and get up in those trees no problem? Right. Because they they don't want to roost in shallow trees. They will from time to time, but they don't want to roost. I say shallow. I should say short. They don't want to roost in short trees. They want to be tall. They want to be high. They want to be high up away from danger. Right. Safety. Safety. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
I went off on a really big rant. We're a few minutes in on this thing. Let's take a quick break and when we come back, I promise we're gonna turn it around. It's gonna be a little bit more exciting. We're gonna talk about some stories and some things that's happened to us. Let's take a quick break. Break time. Thanks for checking out part one to this week's podcast. Part two will be posted soon, so make sure to hit that bell notification and subscribe to our channel so that you'll be notified when we upload the next one. Guys, also, if you have any questions or things that you would like us to talk about in our podcast, please be sure to leave it down in the comment section. And if you would possibly like to be a guest on the show, then make sure to reach out and get a hold of us directly. All right, guys. Thank you all. and We'll be seeing you all soon.